Ever since SpaceX has been flying Falcon 9, United Launch Alliance has been producing information that compares what ULA does to what SpaceX does. Some people have considered that information to be PR, the kind of marketing material that any good corporation routinely produces to advocate for its products. Others have chosen a less kind label, claiming the information is full of untruths or outright lies. Which is it? We're going to walk through an example of their marketing, examine the details, and then you can decide which label applies. This is part one of United Launch Alliance, PR or Lies. We're going to wind the clock back to this cost scorecard produced by ULA in 2014. Let's start with the support to NASA section. SpaceX has gotten $2.5 billion from NASA, has only launched three times, and that means NASA is paying $840 million per flight. As they say in the PR biz, the optics aren't very good. SpaceX has gotten a ton of money and hasn't given much value back. My initial goal was to validate all the ULA numbers, but because of the way the contracts were written, it was hard to find the data I needed, and I frankly got lazy, so I'm going to take them at their word. At least mostly at their word. The data says that ULA did 11 launches for NASA from 2007 to 5714. I went looking for data, and I found that they launched 17 missions during that time period. This is just the kind of attention to detail that makes you confident in a set of data. Let's see if we can validate this SpaceX number, the 2.5 billion number. SpaceX had two big contracts during this time period. The first is the Commercial Orbital Transportation Services, or COTS. This money came to SpaceX through a Space Act agreement. The money was used to develop Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon. SpaceX kicked in $454 million of their own money for this project. The second is the Commercial Resupply Services, or CRS, contract, which actually carries cargo to the International Space Station. It was for $1.6 billion for 12 flights. Add those up and we get a number that I'm going to call 2 billion. Can we find the extra half billion? We'll see if there are any other NASA contracts with SpaceX during that time period. There was the Deep Space Climate Observer, otherwise known as Discover. SpaceX got a $97 million contract to launch it, but that contract was by the Air Force, not by NASA so it doesn't belong here. Jason 3 was contracted in July of 2012 for $82 million, and TESS was contracted in November of 2016 for $87 million. But these two missions illustrate a problem with the approach ULA is using. Companies do not get paid the money for the launch when the contract is signed. They may be paid a small amount along the way, but the bulk of their payment comes when the payload is launched. These missions were launched in 2016 and 2018, so they don't fall in this period in terms of revenue. ULA is playing a cute little game here. Note that the label does not say cost per launch. It says NASA contracted dollars per launch. They're taking the amount of contracts awarded in a period and dividing it by the number of actual flights in the same period, and they're implying that this is cost per launch. A few lines down, they calculate a cost per pound metric by taking the total contract value and dividing it by the number of pounds. That's not a true value because the cost they are using is not associated with the flights they are using. Let's see if we can come up with some more accurate numbers for SpaceX. SpaceX flew two demo flights under COTS. The second demo flight successfully made it to the space station. The cost of both of these flights was covered under the COTS contract, which at this point has been fully paid. SpaceX has received all that money. There were then three operational CRS flights during this time period out of the 12 contracted. Under the contract, these cost $133 million each for a total of $399 million and an overall total of $795 million. If we look at these three flights, that's a per-flight cost of $265 million. If we add in the successful Demo 2 flight, it's a per-flight cost of $199 million. I'm going to ignore the Demo 1 flight because it did not deliver cargo. The $265 million is pretty close to the per-mission cost of ULA, and the $199 million is less. 
Though, as I noted, they actually flew 17 flights, and the $2.6 billion they listed is not what they charged for those flights. Let's look at the mass numbers. The number that they're using for SpaceX is not mass delivered to orbit, as a Dragon is about 13,000 pounds by itself. Here are the mass numbers of cargo delivered by these missions. CRS-3 sees a big jump because it's the first flight of the much larger and more capable Falcon 9 version 1.1. The total mass is 9,594 pounds. I now challenge you to find a reasonable combination of these masses that gives you the 6,671 pounds that ULA claims. I've had no success. These numbers are the ones NASA publishes, so they're readily available, and I find it confusing that the ULA number is wrong. That 9,594 pounds delivered to the ISS comes to about $83,000 per pound. That's pretty high compared to the ULA figure but we need to consider that each of these launches includes a capsule that navigates to the ISS, keeps the payload pressurized, and then returns payload back to Earth. The ULA numbers are purely the mass of the payload on top of the second stage. If you include the Dragon mass, the number is about 13,000 per pound. NASA was very pleased with COTS and CRS. The upfront cost was 953 million for two providers, which was about 10 months' worth of the space station's yearly upgrade budget. And the cost per kilogram of cargo delivered was one-third to one-half of what shuttle cost. Moving down to the industrial base impact, I have two things to say. First, the label on this is cost scorecard, and none of these are about cost. Second, if you don't know how many suppliers your competitor has, you might as well give up doing comparisons that require knowing that data. I don't doubt that ULA has far more rocket job suppliers than SpaceX does, but the question marks here do not inspire confidence. With respect to technical and financial transparency, there is no way that ULA can evaluate how much information SpaceX gives to customers because they are not a SpaceX customer. I do think the ULA payload guides have more information than the Falcon 9 guide, but A, there's a lot of information there, and B, it's pretty obvious that customers can ask SpaceX for more information. I don't see how you can support a claim that there is little information. The cost reduction part caught my eye. First, they talk about costs, which are generally internal costs, rather than price for ULA, and then talk about price for SpaceX. I'm going to assume that they mean price for both, because customers do not care about internal costs. They care about price. ULA is claiming a 5% reduction year over year. Let's look at a couple of missions. In 2009, ULA launched the LRO L Cross mission for NASA on an Atlas V 401 rocket and received $132 million from NASA for a contract signed in 2007. In 2014, ULA launched the Tedris L satellite, also on an Atlas V 401 rocket. The contract for that launch was signed in 2013, and in six years inflation would have pushed the 2007 price from $132 million up to $148 million. With a 5% reduction in cost every year, we would expect that launch to be 36% cheaper, or approximately $110 million. The Tedris launch was part of a contract for four Atlas V launches that according to NASA cost approximately $600 million. So the cost of this one launch was about $150 million, or pretty much what we would expect it to cost. ULA did reduce their Atlas V prices considerably a few years later to better compete with SpaceX. But they do not show a 5% cost reduction year over year for this time period. For financial transparency, I don't think it's worth the effort to go into the details, but there are two points to make. The first is that SpaceX is fully compliant with the requirements for working with NASA. The second is that I'm not sure what point ULA is trying to make on actual prices. The published prices on the SpaceX website are for satellite launches, and the contracts with NASA are flying a cargo capsule to ISS. It's pretty obvious that the prices will be different as the second requires a capsule. It's also very common for government launches to cost extra because they require extra services. ULA knows this as they launch both commercial and government payloads during this period. Here's a quick summary. ULA came up with a metric that looks like cost per flight, but isn't actually cost per flight. ULA counts money from contracted flights that have not yet been flown. 
ULA claims cost reductions that might not exist. And that concludes part one. How would you describe this scorecard? Leave your opinion in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please buy this print.